Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to another episode of Monday Night Mike. I am your host, John Quinn, and boy, do we have a show for you tonight. It is jam-packed with Sea Dogs content up first. You'll see an interview uh, with Sea uh, Dogs alumni Sam Dove McFalls, currently a member of the uh, UMB men's hockey team. He is uh, going to talk to us all about his career with the Sea Dogs, and uh, we'll have some fan questions, etc. Get your questions in for Sam, and hopefully we can get to them during our interview. Following that, we're going to hear from current Sea Dog uh, Matt Gould, and uh, we're going to play a fun little game with him. We'll get his picks on the upcoming um, NHL uh, play-in playoffs. Uh, hopefully that's coming up sooner than later, so we'll get to that interview as well. Guys, if you have any questions, comments, feedback, anything like that, please share it with us. Uh, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. You can find us at SJC Dogs. Uh, not too much in Sea Dogs news since the last time we spoke, uh, other than, of course, Tuesday we did host Sorry, not host, but have the uh, CHL import draft, and the Sea Dogs made two selections, uh, taking Fedor Svechkov from Russia, a uh, young forward with our first pick, and the second pick taking um, defenseman Jan Hampel uh, from the Czech Republic. Um, so two new faces in the Sea Dogs organization. You can read all about them on our website. There's an article up right now on the homepage. You can learn all about um, our two selections from the CHL import draft and take a look at all the picks that were made uh, last year. Tuesday. Uh, without further ado, I believe Sam is ready. I don't want to waste any more time because I'm excited to talk to him. So we will get to it. Here he is, Sam Dove McFalls. Fans, I am joined now by Sea uh, Dogs alumni number 16. He's a President Cup champion, now a member of the UND Varsity Reds men's hockey team, Sam Dove McFalls. Sam, welcome to the show. Thanks for having me, John. No problem. Our pleasure, Sam. I'll do the usual kind of catch up before we get into the reliving your, your glory days, as you call them. But uh, how how you been holding up during uh, quarantine? Where have you been? Uh, how have you been keeping busy? Yeah, well, as soon as the COVID started hitting in Canada, my mom uh, wanted me to get back to Montreal as quickly as possible, which now looking back on things probably wasn't the greatest idea of all. And uh, so I was there for a few months, and then um, for the last month or so, I've been out in uh, Manitoba with my girlfriend that I met at UNB. So I've been here for a month now, and I should be going back to uh, Montreal next week or on the weekend. And um, yeah, I've just been relaxing and working out. I was supposed to do an internship with the uh, Sea Dogs, but obviously the offices were closed, so that didn't happen this summer. I might have to push it back to uh, summer of 2021. Yeah, I've been having to get my own coffee here all throughout uh, quarantine. It's been terrible. So we, we, we miss you that you didn't uh, get to start. Uh, Sam, I was looking through your, your stats, and I was surprised, and I, I'm sure I saw this before, but you actually played, uh, was it your 14-year-old year? It was a U16 team in Berlin? Yep. How, would, how did that come to be? I mean, typically you start kind of local team, and then maybe, you know, once you reach AAA, you move around a little bit, but you ended up playing in Germany. How does how does that come to be? Yeah. Yeah. Um... It was, this, my dad is a political science professor and he focuses a lot on German European studies. So uh, he had a sabbatical year as a university professor. And um, so he had projects going on there and he spoke German, my mom spoke German. So they both kind of wanted all three, all three of us, like me and my sisters to uh, learn German. So they thought it was a good opportunity to, to leave and go there for a year or so. That was it. My dad worked on his projects. My mom kind of went back and forth between Montreal and Berlin. And um, I was there for a year playing hockey and basically like a, a, a sports program there with the, where the uh, old East German Olympic teams used to uh, used to train. Uh, Sprechen Sie Deutsch? Yeah, in this one. Uh, that's all I know. So whatever you just said, oh, I'm, I'm sure. I just I'm said sure. a little bit. <laughs> I, 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 I put I, that together I've in lost, my context. I've lost a lot, but... Um, I can still understand it pretty well, but speaking it is a lot more difficult for me now. But um, reading and uh, listening is a lot easier for me. Yeah, and I how, can catch most of it. How was playing hockey in Germany? Was it you know you, you found the skill level sort of up to par to what you were used to, or were, were you kind of that Canadian kid um, who showed up and it was you were, you were dominating because uh, you've been playing your whole life? Yeah, well, I, game wise, yeah, I was like. I finished the leading scorer in the in the league that year. Um, well, up until I got injured for the last ten games or something, I had like a ten point lead, and then someone overtook me at the end. 
but um, I, uh, yeah, I'd say I was probably one of the better players in the league that year. But in terms of training and practicing, it was something completely different that I'd never really experienced before. Um, even at 13, 14, they were hard on the off ice training. We had a lot of stuff like uh, I was never really in a gym lifting weights before that year. And that year, I think I gained 25 pounds, probably mostly of muscle. And I grew like six inches or something. Wow. I went from five, seven to six, one and 155 pounds, 180 pounds. And um, yeah, so I developed a lot physically and the practicing there, you really work on your skills. You really focus on, on the skill. like the European games kind of a bit different that way. And it really helped me in terms of my skating, edge work, stick handling, all that stuff. I felt a lot more confident uh, coming back from there. So even though maybe the games weren't quite at the same level, I think practice and, you know, workout wise, I really developed that year. Now, did you have sort of aspirations the year before that of kind of making the queue? Obviously you always want to, get to that next level but like did did you feel that that year you came back and it was a surprise like wow check out this this kid and how much he's improved or did you find you were kind of in line with your, your kind of trajectory at that point no I was always um one of the better players on my team even here I'd been the captain of basically every team I played on growing up so I I, was, I think people already kind of knew um that I was a good player here I didn't just come back and come come out of nowhere I don't think but um yeah I, I came back and I think people kind of forgot about me just because I was gone for you and then I came out like oh yeah this kid like you remember him now. he was pretty good I liked him more when he but, wasn't 6'1 but <laughs> yeah, yeah yeah and um yeah but I think it it definitely did not hinder my development going over there I think if anything it helped me out quite a bit Fantastic. So I want to jump ahead now to your uh, your draft into the Sea Dogs 2013. Any memories of that draft? Did you go to the draft? Where was it that year? Kind of thoughts leading into it? Yeah, um, it was in Shikutami. And um, I was coming off a knee surgery. I'd torn my meniscus in uh, one of the last regular season games of my midget year. And uh, so I was out for four to five months, basically the same injury I had my 18 year in St. John, just on the other knee. And um, so I've kind of, teams kind of doubts about, I think about my knee, but I knew St. John were really interested in my coaches all of the year. And Major was saying this guy from the scout, the St. John scout, he loves you, he loves you. Like they kept talking to me about St. John. So it kind of wasn't really a, uh, like a surprise, I guess, when when I got picked by St. John, but um, to be honest, at first I was really hoping I'd get drafted by a team closer to home, but uh, looking back on it now, I couldn't have been any happier with how things worked out. Yeah, you ended up getting to, to go home later on in your in your career in, in 2017 to, to yeah. win the cup or get to do it at home. So. <laughs> yeah, yeah uh, exactly. Do, do you remember anything about that draft class? I mean, looking back on it, you, you're drafted along with Nathan Noel, Shabbat, Matthew Joseph, Bailey Webster. Do you remember kind of meeting those guys at the time? Did you know any of them leading into the draft? I imagine you would have played against uh, Shabby and Joseph, not so much Noel and Webby in, the, in Atlanta, Canada. Yeah, but. I, I didn't really know Shabby, actually, honestly. Uh, the only one I really knew was uh, Matthew Joseph. We had played together. We both played Midget Espoir that year, so we weren't playing Midget AAA. And uh, we had made, like, the Midget Espoir all-star team, kind of, and they made, like, all the best Espoir kids went and played uh, as a team at the Midget AAA Challenge in, uh, in Quebec City in December, I think. So me and Matthew were on that team together, so we kind of knew each other from there. And uh, we were kind of drafted around the same time, I think both in the third round uh, of the draft that year. So we were kind of one after the other together at the booth and stuff. So he was the one I saw the most. Um, I remember I remember Nate getting drafted. I remember Will getting drafted. I remember Shabby getting drafted, actually. I was, I was almost disappointed because that was, that was quite a bit higher than I was supposed to get drafted. But anytime St. John kind of came up I knew right. that there was a, a good chance so I was I was kind of hoping and then I was like oh they picked this other guy I don't know who he is and it turns out to be pretty good <laughs> <laughs> yeah and then, uh, then they picked Joey Richard and then me and Matthew and then after that I don't know I was down in the booth with DK and uh, and with uh, Scott McCain <laughs> cool good company 
Uh, yeah. So fast forward 2013-14, your first season, uh, you, you wind up with 10 points. Uh, the team misses the playoffs. It's, it's not a great year in, in Sea Dogs history, but, but what do you remember about that uh, that first year in the queue? Uh, as bad as we were, we, we really had a great group, group of guys that year. I had a lot of fun, a lot of good vets, uh, and a lot of guys actually that I play with, played with at UNB. So uh, Oliver Cooper was there my first year. Steven Anderson actually drove me to the rink every day. and uh, I was playing with him at UNB this year. So a few guys that I played with and then some other guys that I was playing against in the, in the AUS. So it was fun to see them. And um, yeah, probably the biggest thing that I remember about my first year was training camp and um, like my first practice, my first games. I was like, how am I ever going to play at this level? Like it felt so much faster than what I was used to. I guess I hadn't really played a game in like eight months or something because I'd gotten injured. And then uh, on top of that, I wasn't playing midget AAA. I was playing midget Espoir. So it was a league just full of 15-year-olds. And then all of a sudden, I was up against 20-year-olds. So, hmm. um, But it was it's amazing how much you develop and you improve as you play in that league. And you know, by the end, I was a, like to think I was a pretty good Q player. And I was able to make a difference on the ice. <laughs> Pretty good, so a bit of an understatement, but I'll, I'll let you be humble. We'll, we'll get to the humble test later on in the lightning round. But uh, next season, uh, you, you talked about uh, prior to this, you know, always being a captain, always being a leader on the teams, but you end up getting an A on your sweater uh, that season, just your, your second year in the league. You're a 17 year old, obviously a, a young team. But uh, what does that feel? What does that do for your confidence getting that sort of uh, vote from, from the coaching staff? Yeah, it was, it was pretty special. I wasn't really expecting that at all, to be honest. Um, it it kind of happened around Christmas time when we traded um, our captain, Ollie LeBlanc, away. Um, and so then Mark Tremaine became the captain. They, I guess they wanted to name a new assistant. And uh, Ross Yates called me in and told me, and I was not expecting that at all. I thought he was going to show me some video from the last game or some clip of something I did wrong or something I did right and he told me yeah you're gonna be the assistant captain I was like what like, I didn't really I, I didn't really expect it especially at 17 it wasn't necessarily like a high pick or anything but it was really nice to get that recognition and um yeah from that point on I think I I got a lot more confident and I felt like I, I had an impact in the room as well as on the ice and then the next season, I mean, you're, you're sort of on this trajectory, you're getting, um, you know, producing points, you know, have an A and then going into your third season, it's usually a pretty big breakout year for a lot of guys. Uh, but you end up getting an injury pretty early on in the season. Can you talk about that and how hard that is to kind of battle through, especially in a year that's supposed to be kind of your year? Yeah, yeah, that was, that was really tough, I remember. Um, even now, like, I wonder almost what could have been if that never happened. Um, Cause I started that year, I think really well. And I had a good preseason and uh, the first few games I I'd played well. And I was, I was, you know, honestly couldn't be happy with the way things were going. And all of a sudden they get that injury and uh, basically out for close to I think 40 games. And even out for 40 games seems like a long time. And to be honest, I still think I came back too quickly because uh, I came back and started having these groin problems and, uh, a few nagging injuries and I had to sit out another game after that once I'd come back and um, you know with looking back on it I think I could have dealt with it better and it's like all part of the learning experience and a learning curve and um, you know I'd, I'd been injured before but never really early on in the season like that and come usually my my injuries had ended my season so I never really had to, to come back in the in the middle of the year so it's definitely an experience I learned from and um, yeah, I would, I'd maybe do a few things differently if, uh, if I had to do it again and it happen to me again. And just prior to that season, kind of talking about your trajectory, that was the NHL draft, correct? Yeah, I'd, I'd just gotten drafted by, by the Flyers and, uh, yeah, so very high on confidence and uh, I was feeling good and, um, you know, I'd always kind of been seen as a, a, a more of a defensive forward and I was hoping to, to break out more as the as an offensive threat as well and I'd started pretty well that year and then uh, yeah obviously the injury kind of changed things a bit for me. 
can you talk a little bit about that, that NHL draft experience? Did you attend the draft? Where was it? Uh, I know there was a couple of different Sea Dogs there as well, getting drafted. Yeah. It was a big year for that that entire group. Can you talk about that experience? Yeah, yeah, the whole draft experience was uh, was pretty amazing, honestly, especially with uh, having I don't know, like I think seven teammates also getting drafted that year. Wow. It was pretty cool. So even even the combine and all that stuff beforehand that we all did together pretty much was was really cool and uh, it's pretty impressive, honestly. Um, the draft that year was in uh, Sunrise and the Florida Panthers were hosting it. So I was down in Fort Lauderdale for a, a week with uh, a few of my friends and my family before uh, before the draft. And then uh, for the draft was the end of the week of holidays. So um, it was it was really cool. And uh, you get to see guys like Connor McDavid getting drafted. So, so it's pretty... <laughs> Pretty neat experience and um, yeah, something I'll never forget. Very cool. Now I do want to get into a couple Q uh, records. Um, you're, you're in the record books uh, for the franchise and also uh, just in the Q record books in general. So the Q website has a really good database. You can look up a player and see exactly where they rank and a okay. hundred different things. Some of them are very particular, like, you know, most shots in an away game in a seat. Like, it, you know, I wouldn't go bragging about it, but I picked out a, a couple of the cooler <laughs> ones that you may want to mention to a, a friend or two in, in conversation. But uh, a couple that you hold QMJHL uh, records, your number three all time for fastest goals uh, between two people. So you scored and someone else scored. Uh, so it was six seconds apart. Do you do you remember by chance when that was? It's a playoff it record. It's playoffs. a playoff record, I should say. Yeah. Yeah, it was in Shikudumi, I think. Yeah, exactly. Against the, uh, I think Valeno had just scored, and then off the faceoff. Exactly. Um, I I even remember because I think Nate was the center on that goal, and he high sticked. I I could I remember almost every game. Run. And I watched like the highlights of those of that playoff run. I think it was Nate the center who high stick their center off the draw, and you can you can hear um, their coach kind of screaming at the at the referee. And I just that went would be up John, yeah. kind of, just some <laughs> yeah, just a just a quick shot. And I I think the goalie was screened from the defenseman or something and went in. And I think it made it three or four nothing that game. Yeah, because the final was, score was uh, five game, nothing. Game yeah. game three, I think, and. Yeah. Uh, in Shikudu, yeah. yeah. And, and, then, and then you're also eighth all-time for fastest goals between three people, and it was that same series of goals because JV scored, oh, okay. you scored, and then uh, 49 seconds total later, uh, Boko scored the, the final goal, the fifth oh. goal. So. Okay. <laughs> the yeah. three of you, the three right. of you were in there yeah. together, uh, you, Joe, and Boko. All right. Uh, and then getting into uh, Sea Dogs records, uh, you do hold um, one – I mean, you hold a bunch of records, but like I said, it's like – most shorthanded goals away in one season sort of thing. Like, you know, it, they're cool, pretty but it's, it's, pretty they're, they're, still pretty good. they're still pretty good. Uh, but this one was uh, most overtime goals in the playoffs in your career. Uh, do you know how many you have? Just one, I think. Yeah, it's, just, it's one, yeah. So you hold, yeah. The, you hold the record <laughs> with like 20 other people. I think that's uh, my only OT goal in the in the Q period. Oh, really? I don't think I, I don't, I didn't get many three on three <laughs> in overtime. All in that, all that German period. skating practice uh, didn't go to you. Yeah. So. <laughs> Still wasn't enough. I should spend an extra year there. <laughs> but obviously you remember that game and, and Joseph was on here uh, a couple weeks ago and talked about that specific game when we were talking about kind of 2017 yeah, memories outside a, of the that championship. That was an amazing but. game. That was, that was a crazy game. The, the Val d'Or goalie Montpellier, his performance that game was unbelievable. Was, we honestly were sort of lost for words. We didn't really know what to say between the second and third, other than like, "Boys, we're going to score. Like, we're gonna, we have to score at some point. Like, we keep playing like this." Like they had something like nine shots. And we had fifty through two periods. So. Yeah, and they and they scored yeah. like they scored like three minutes into the second period, and then it was like mm-hmm. you play the whole second, and even I think yeah. we ended up scoring six minutes into the third. I was looking at the stat sheet, but like yeah, it's like twenty five minutes of scoring. Goal, this, yeah. Back door to Smallman, and one one goal that the Montpellier didn't have a chance at. <laughs> <laughs> but I remember vividly like where I was when when you scored the the yeah. winner, and you could just like feel the the nerves in the ring because that was our first game against Val mm. Like, okay, we th- th- this isn't yeah. how it's going to end, right? And they had just upset. Yeah. Um, I can't remember sure who it was. Like, Shuningen, yeah, yeah, so, uh, a lot, lot of momentum going their way. 
I, I do have a, a question that came in off uh, Twitter before we keep going down uh, memory lane, but uh, uh, Nico Blatchman uh, was wondering, why are you never never afraid to speak your mind? Yeah, it's kind of funny. The guys always made fun of me for that. But um, <laughs> um, I won't say why they said I did, but I'll say what I think I do. And I think it's kind of genetic to be honest my dad is very opinionated and he'll always say things the way he sees them so I think I probably get a bit of that from him and I usually get pretty embarrassed when he does it like sometimes I'm just like dad just keep it keep it to yourself like you don't have to say this so I guess I'm a bit like that too and uh, I like to think I'm not as bad but you know maybe I am <laughs> the lifelong fear of uh, becoming your parents is not one that goes away. Exactly. So don't, uh, yeah. <laughs> don't think that's over quite yet now that you're uh, officially yeah. an adult. So. <laughs> uh, going back to the 2016-17 the season, uh, a lot of guys had mentioned, and I've asked the question, they've been lightning around, you know, who was the unsung hero on that team? And, and your name seems to come up uh, a ton during that. Uh, looking back on that season and that, that cup run and Memorial Cup, like, what do you think your role was on, on that team? Um, you know, I didn't, I, I just went out and played my game, to be honest. I didn't really try to worry about what my role was. I knew what, I, what my strengths were. I'm good defensively and good on the PK. And I think obviously those are some things I could help the team with, but we had so many good players that could play so many different roles on any given night, like one, one night, one guy could be the, the hero, and then the other night, it could be the next one in line. Like, it didn't didn't really matter, to be honest. And as long as I think I would just focus on playing a, a solid 200-foot game and, you know, just playing playing to my strengths and playing playing as hard as I could. Um, probably people would peg me in as the, as the top nine forward on the team that year and as a, a, a solid PKer who could fill in offensively sometimes as well. And you had a, a string, and I was trying to remember this, and I remember kind of uh, talking to you about it at the time, and I can't remember the exact play, but you were kind of famous for like the almost a trick play off the face-off on the PK mm -hmm. where you you get sprung with a breakaway, and it seemed like you had like five, six goals in the in the span of a couple of weeks till teams sort of kind of caught on, like, okay, they do this every time, like we need to watch out for this. But how, yeah. did, how did that play come to be, and can you kind of break down how, how that worked and why it was so successful? Well, we kind of stole it from uh, other teams who were – well – we stole part of the play and we added a bit to it. So uh, me and Matthew played on the PK a lot, Matthew, Joseph. And um, so we kind of developed a good partnership. A lot of the time, he was the quicker one. So a lot of the time I tell him, if I get the puck and you see that I have a bit of time, you start flying the zone. Go, <laughs> you go for a breakaway. And I would I would just like flip it or bank it off, try to bank it off the wall or something so he could he could go and get it for a, for a breakaway. But um the play that I think you're talking about would normally be off a face-off. And uh, I would try to win it back to the defenseman and Matthew would kind of drop off to the other corner. And a lot of teams would do that to, to get like a clear icing, but um, we kind of added to it. And Matthew said, why don't you just try to split through the defenseman and I'll try to get it to you for a breakaway. So that worked a couple of times. And uh, yeah, I think we got a couple of goals off it as well. Uh, yeah, I remember it being very successful. And, uh, I think it was a yeah, road trip that I, I took with the team to uh, to Halifax and Cape Breton, and you pulled it off like multiple times back to back <laughs> games. And I was like, dude, yeah. how are teams not picking yeah. up on this? But uh, mm -hmm. uh, one, yeah. going back through my own sort of personal memories of, of that cup run, I, I remembered, and you spoke about having friends and family in there to support you, but you always seem to have a pretty big contingent of, of family. And I, I spent a lot of time talking with your mom and, and your sisters. I believe there's. Two, yes, yeah, and two. then uh, yeah. and uh, and then you had a group of guys as well that seemed to travel around with you who were there at the yeah. the Cup Finals uh, in in Blainville, and then they were there for the Memorial Cup as well. And I remember I was walking out with a another staff member, and they were in front of us, and I'd seen them before, and I maybe said hi to them, but uh, they may not mm -hmm. have known who I was, and I knew they were your friends, and so I started talking with everybody yeah. loudly enough so they could hear me, and I was like, man, the team just needs to get rid of that dub guy. He sucks. <laughs> and I just started yeah. trash, trash talking you, and the guys literally stopped dead in their tracks and turned around, looked like they were ready to just murder us right there, and I was like, I'm kidding, I'm kidding, like I'm with the team, and they were like, okay, okay, like we you know, shook hands or whatever and carried on, but I, you had some very uh, passionate friends with you that traveled around, and they were ready to defend yeah. you at any at any time 
those are my high school buddies. So from grade seven on, um, and then one of them basically since daycare when I was a year and a half, um, we were friends. So I've been friends with those guys for a long time and they, uh, they definitely give me good support um, throughout my career and they still watch my game sometimes online and always uh, want to see how I'm doing even if I'm away from them nine months a year usually. <laughs> That's awesome. That's awesome. Uh, and this is a this is a terrible segue because I mentioned getting rid of you, but you, you did end up getting traded uh, away <laughs> from St. John. I had no they impact on that. Got rid of me. They didn't. They, they didn't ask the game host uh, if you should if you should be <laughs> traded. I, I would have said no. But um, talk a little bit about that. I mean, obviously getting getting traded. You know, a team thinks that you're quite valuable and you're going into a 20 year old situation on a kind of stack team that was again, going for it where St. John, you knew, you know, the, the dream was sort of over. We were um, pulling it all apart and, and the rebuild was going to start, but what's going through your head? When do you find out that you're being traded and in that, uh, in that sequence of events and, and what are your thoughts when you find out that you're kind of leaving your home you've had the last four years? Yeah. Um, yeah. I have to, Go all, well, I got traded in June officially, but we'll have to go all the way back to December really for the start of the story. Um, Cause they, when we trade for uh, Simone Bork, uh, Trevor um, told me, Ramuski, they, they really want you. Like they, they want you right now, but we've negotiated so that like you just go next year. Um, but before like we go through this trade, I just want to make sure like it's okay with you. And I just wanted to talk to you first and, um, I was I was okay with it to be honest. At the time, I was still really just solely focused on winning the cup with St. John and then hopefully signing a pro contract with the Flyers because I was still uh, their property. So I said, you know, you know what, Trevor, do whatever, do whatever we need to do to to win this year. Like this is our this is what we've been building for for four years. Like I knew I kind of knew in the back of my head that St. John would be going through a rebuild, so it'd almost be better for me probably to uh, to move on at the end of that year. Um, regardless of whether I was going pro or staying in the queue. So um, I was okay with it. And um, yeah, so the trade was made. And then um, so as the season went on, I didn't really think of it at all. Then, of course, uh, first round of the playoffs, who do we play Ramuski. is uh, Ramuski. <laughs> and uh, yeah, I was getting chirped all series about, I guess they knew already that I was supposed to be coming the following year. So yeah, some guys were were, letting, were chirping me, especially the guys who were leaving and who weren't coming back there, so they knew they wouldn't have to play with me. Right, <laughs> right, right. right. <laughs> so, um, yeah, they were kind of chirping me, making fun of me that, you know, oh, they don't really want you there and stuff. Just trying yeah. to get under your skin. And then, yeah, and uh, yeah, and then after that, once we beat them, I was happy that you could move on from that and then just worry about the, the next few rounds and and we had a pretty memorable run. Indeed. Any any other memories that, that kind of stick out? I know we talked about the Valdor series, and everyone sort of brings up the, the Shikudami series anytime I ask the question, but any memories from you about that maybe second half of the season, that, that late push, and then and then the playoffs and, and the Memorial Cup? Um, yeah, I think game three in Plainville was the highlight of the playoffs for me personally. And as a team, I thought it was a pretty huge win as well because we were going into Blaineville up two nothing, and then you know that that game they pushed us hard, and it was uh, it was probably the tightest game of the series. And I was just able to to uh, to score two goals that game, and we won two nothing, and I got the three three nothing series lead. And at that point, it's pretty uh, nails all, halfway in the coffin. <laughs> so, um, it was uh, yeah, that was a pretty cool moment for me. That's probably the biggest highlight of the of the playoff run for me. And do you think especially part, at home and in my hometown. Yeah, I was gonna ask was was being home and like family and friends, yeah. everyone being there, did that yeah, play a pretty big impact? I, re I remember when I scored the first goal, I I could hear like people scream like obviously there weren't that many St. John fans. Like we had a quite a bit of family, like a lot of guys were from Montreal, but I remember hearing people scream in the stands and I knew exactly who it was and then back at my friend group they were the first ones i heard <laughs> after awesome. i scored so that was pretty cool that's got to give you the extra boost that's awesome yeah 
Yeah. Uh, so next season, we talked about the the trade, but uh, you play your your twenty year old year uh, in Ramuski, and you have your best year yet points wise, and you end up winning the Guy Carbono Trophy for top uh, defensive forward, which you had kind of stated was a goal of yours. Was you know you were you were known as a defensive forward. You did want to have more offense, and mm-hmm. it seems like you got, you won the trophy for one, and then you had your best year in points in the other. But how did you feel about your time in in Ramuski? And obviously. You, you feel free to mention uh, Alexi Lafreniere at any point yeah. during this, uh, yeah, well, so we can watch our view. Honest, view can I, go up, but yeah, I really, I really enjoyed my year there. Um, it was we had a really good season. I think to start, uh, most people in the media were kind of ranking us pretty low, like fifth or sixth in our in our division. So, like between fifteen and eighteen in the, in the league, really. But uh, I don't think they realized. Um, how good Lafreniere would be right away his first year and uh, a few of the rookies and younger guys we had and you know kind of everything just clicked that year and everything worked like almost way better than we thought it would ever work like um, at Christmas time we were first in the league going into the trade deadline and I remember Serge was like sorry I don't know what's happening here but we're first in the league and I never (laughs) thought we'd be here (laughs) going into the trade deadline like we were supposed to be selling at Christmas and trading, we were even maybe going to trade you away if you wanted to have a chance to go to a contender. But like now we're going to try to make a few additions here to, to go on a bit of a run. And unfortunately, playoffs didn't work work out so well for us. We lost in the first round, but um, nonetheless, it was a it was a really good season. I was I was really happy with uh, my experience over there. Awesome, awesome. Uh... Then the following year, and I remember talking to you, um, the alumni events um, during the ring ceremony and stuff, it was uh, John Huberto's uh, induction for the Hall of Fame, and you guys came down, and I remember talking to you about, you know, what are you doing next season? Are you, you know, going pro, going to school? And you you were pretty torn about it. You were like, everyone keeps asking me this, and I don't know, and it's killing me, and, and you didn't seem to, uh, you didn't seem to be leaning one way or the other, but uh, what, what ended up sort of swaying your decision and... Uh, and, and when did you make that decision? Um, when I probably when I realized that if I was going pro, I was going to be starting definitely in the um, East Coast League. I think it coming out of junior and uh, still being a young guy like that, I don't think it was necessarily the best uh, developmental path for me. And I spoke to a few guys who played there, and it didn't sound like something I was ready to do right away. Um, and honestly, the opportunity to play at UNB and like you go through their roster and it's it's just top end junior players from top to bottom. So um, it was uh, really almost a, a no brainer when I really thought about it. Honestly, um, guys who play junior kind of, it was also probably a bit of an ego thing, like the coming as it being a drafted guy and um, guys kind of make fun of the ones who go to U sports and CIS after, after junior. So I didn't want to be, you know, one of those guys, I guess, but um, I don't regret it one bit. The hockey there is, is great, a lot better than people think. And uh, definitely a step up from, uh, from junior major. And it was my first year there was a, had to adapt a bit. And, um, but the, the team at UNB is, uh, is stacked to say the least. And, uh, a good group of guys and really having fun they're really enjoying it um you know initially i'd kind of planned to be there only for three years but i think i'll be i'll be staying for a fourth now and you talked earlier about your dad uh being a professor at a university i mean he must have been pretty happy to see you take the take the school route but you've always been a pretty smart guy a a school guy as they say but you were uh i remember you always sort of being um maybe not humble about it but just like you didn't want to be known as a school guy. Was that? Did you feel like that was sort of a not a bad tag, but just like, is is that a bad thing in the room to be known as a smart a smart kid? I don't think so. Um, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, I, I I don't see why it'd be a bad thing. That's fair. But That's fair. Yeah, I've I've always been serious about school and wanted to do well. So, um, yeah, I my parents were happy. They they they've never like really wanted to push me one way or another they've always kind of let me make my own decisions and you know learn from my mistakes or you know if I take the right decision I do but um yeah definitely in this case I I know I made the right decision and 
um, I think they're happy as well that I'm I'm getting a university degree out of it and still playing uh, good hockey. And for that university degree, can you talk a little bit about the program um, that you're involved with and how your kind of first uh, two years have gone? Obviously, the second year, not how anyone imagined uh, anything would be ending, but uh, just talk about kind of the, the school side. Yeah. Um, it's uh, Well, the program I'm in is uh, in the kinesiology department. Officially, it's called Recreation and Sports Studies. Um, but I'm in the management stream. There's a health and wellness stream, management stream, and a uh, like education stream. So uh, I took the management stream. So essentially, it's it's sports management. There's a lot of uh, business courses and uh, a few kinesiology courses and some very more uh, specific sports management courses. So like sports marketing, uh, sponsorship in the sports world, and uh, you know financial management of sport organizations, all that that kind of stuff. So, um, yeah, I, I really enjoy it. I've, I've been doing very well and, uh, you know, it's, <laughs> I actually enjoy going to class. I wanted to make sure if I went to university, I'd take something I'd be interested in and um, not just something that, you know, sounds good or that people think highly of. I just, I wanted to do something that I, I wanted to do and that would actually help me, um, you know, achieve my, my career goals later in life. You know, I've always thought, that if I didn't get to play hockey, I'd like to work in, in the management of a, of a sports organization. So I, hopefully that, that'll help me, help me get there, um, you know, after my, my hockey career. And circling back to your hockey career, we had another uh, fan question um, about your, uh, your first year um, playing U Sports and, and winning the title uh, with UNB. Um, your favorite memory from the uh, tournament in Lethbridge, and that comes from Scott Nickerson. What, what do you remember um, most? I mean, winning the cup is always going to be number one, but uh, any any favorite memory? Yeah. Um, there's two. Like, well, the, the semifinal against St. FX, who are pretty big rivals in the, in the Maritimes, is a uh, AUS matchup. Like, every game against them is uh, like hard fought battles and pretty mean, to be honest. Um, so we. We beat them like eight to one, I think, in the, in that game. We were we came out flying and we were up four nothing in like the first ten minutes and they never really recovered from it, I think. Um, but yeah, they had beaten us twice after Christmas and you know, we, we had been able to beat them in the AUS finals, but it still kinda of stung that they beat us twice and you know, every every loss at UND comes with a hard week of practice, especially <laughs> with Gardner. So um, we we don't like to lose much and uh yeah, and then obviously the final game was uh, was pretty amazing. I remember um, Alberta had some some really good players, and they scored the first goal of that game. And it, uh, one of their players just flew through the neutral zone, and um, I was like, "Wow!" I never, I don't think I'd ever seen someone like fly by one of our defensemen like that easily, and then set his guy up back door, and they scored like a tap, and like, "Geez, this could be a long game." And then, and then he came back and and fought back and and won the game, and it was uh, it was. It's probably one of the the most fun games I, I ever played, to be honest. Wow. Sounds good. That brings me to the end of our uh, our hockey-related questions. I still have the lightning round, but if there's any uh, shout-outs, notes you wanted to send along, events, philanthropic endeavors, anything like that you want people to know about, the floor is yours. Um, feel free to say whatever you want, thank yous, anything like that, uh, any stories I may have missed, and then we'll get into uh, the lightning round. Um. Well, honestly, it's maybe I'm a bit boring, but I just want to say thank you to all the essential workers, honestly, in those in these tough times. And um, thanks to my mom, who's a doctor and who's been uh, working her ass off a lot. <laughs> Sorry for the, for the language, but she's been working a lot. And I uh, just want to say, you know, thanks to all those people who've been helping keep keep us keep society together, I guess, and uh, who've been doing an amazing job and really selfless work. Fantastic. Respect. So we are ready for the lightning round. You said you had one last shout out. Go for it. Yeah. It's to my sister, Carly, who, uh, she, she decided to, uh, work in the, in the old people homes and, uh, back in long-term healthcare centers and back in Quebec. And, uh, I think she kind of went in there not really knowing what to expect, probably just uh, giving, making food or sweeping the floors and stuff. But she's she's had to get in there and do some things that I would probably never want to do. 
uh, no matter how much someone paid me. So um, just want to say I really respect what she's been doing and uh, good on her for doing, for doing it. That's a good brother right there. So how the lightning round works, 10 questions. We're looking for honesty. Um, no one has ever skipped a question, but you do have the option to skip a question if you don't want to answer it. Having said that, you will be judged accordingly. Uh, so, so honesty and speed, that's why they call it the speed, lightning round. Yeah. Speed, speed and honesty. The speed sort of like dies off around question five and then we just end up <laughs> elaborating on it. Yeah. So, yeah. <laughs> you're, you're fully prepared. You're well prepared. All uh, right. Number one, this is the humble test. Uh, how many points did you have in your QMJHL career? I think this 175. Uh, yes, and you're like just short enough. It's 182 is the answer. So like you're seven short. That's perfect. You're I thought it was around there because I knew I had about a hundred when I left St. John's. My bills made me a pillow with a bunch of like oh, stats. stats on my time in St. John's was like 109 <laughs> points, I think. Yeah. So I figured I'd be around there. <laughs> Do you still have the pillow? There was. Yeah. Okay, I perfect. still have. It. I still have it uh, at home in Montreal, and uh, yeah, Fantastic. I have it. Uh, number two, any regrets about deciding to live with Mike Thomas? <laughs> Skip. <laughs> Skip. Skip. Okay. No, that's fine. That's fine. <laughs> For anyone that doesn't know, yeah, you ended up rooming with, uh, yeah. Mike Thomas I, your I first year at uh, UMB. Yeah, I lived with Mike and it was his first year teaching and my first year university and we went through a few growing pains together, both of us and. Um, but I enjoyed living with Mike and, uh, he was good. He helped me out a lot cause he's from Freddie and he knew, uh, I knew the city and he knew he had played for UNB the year before. So he knew, uh, the coach as well. And he, so he helped me out a lot. That's awesome. Uh, number three, and you seem to have kind of a photographic memory when it comes to a specific games. So I'm very interested in your answer on this one. Uh, what's the worst game you ever played? Not so much, you know, the team got blown out ten nothing, but like you had just a terrible game. Like you couldn't. I had a terrible. Yeah, game. like you, you just played poorly. Like maybe not on the stat sheet or anything. You know, like minus five, but like the one game that sticks out. You're like, I played so poorly that game. Um. You know, we always remember the good ones, don't we? You know, we kind of try to forget the bad ones. Um, but I'll, I'll say this. My my last ever game, I think, in game seven, I think I finished a minus three or minus four. So <laughs> not great. Not really how you wanted to hang up your uh, no. Your <laughs> no. <laughs> okay. Glad I could uh, dig up that corpse for you. <laughs> uh, number four, and this is another big skip possibility here. Uh, you, Kyle Ward, um, Dave Como, Landon Quinney, um, there may have been others as well. You guys went to Cancun following the uh, Memorial Cup run. Uh, who, was, yeah. who was the biggest flight risk? Who, who, who was the guy that everyone had to babysit? It was like, watch out for this guy. And Nathan Noel. <laughs> Nathan Noel, okay. Perfect, perfect. <laughs> There's a snorting. Mostly because snorting, it's such a good answer. <laughs> mostly because of his allergy and... Um, <laughs> He insisted he was allergic to coconut. But, um, <laughs> we were like, no, it's just peanuts. It's just peanuts. Because he'd always only said peanuts. And then we had him drink a pina colada, but then he was puking like, <laughs> the next day. So. Turns out he knew his own body. Yeah. Imagine that. Yeah. I didn't know you could get virgin uh, pina coladas in uh, Cancun, yeah. but that's great. Uh, moving on to number five. Um, you, uh, Joe Valano, and Spencer Smallman seem to have a pretty good trio going. Uh, you seem to be pretty good friends with their uh, their billets uh, parents mm -hmm. as well. Um, a lot of photos of the three of you together. Who who was the mom and who was the dad in the relationship with Joe? Joe was obviously sweet baby Joe. Between you and Spencer, who who was the mom and who was the dad? To be honest, I think Spence was both. <laughs> <laughs> were you were you the evil older brother then, uh, being a bad influence? Uh, I I would try to get them to uh get joe to go say something to spence yet under his skin or something but yeah i, I try sometimes but i don't think i was, I was that bad okay I, I, yeah i can't see you being a uh, pure evil uh number six you're a fredericton guy now and mike thomas has uh, chaperoned you around uh your favorite uh, nightlife establishment in in fredericton 
I went to school in oh, Fredericton as well. I know the scene. It's it's changed. Uh, cellar different. pub. Cellar, the cellar. Cellar pub. It's a good yeah. one. It's a good one. Wait, what, wings, do you, what do you? What do you? Wing night are, which wings do you get? Good. I got the hot wing. Okay, salt and pepper. Personal favorite. Check those oh, out. Few yeah, times. no, I. A lot of the guys like those ones, but I I like the spicy stuff. Okay, minus one on that one. Uh, <laughs> number seven, Sam. Uh, uh, this is one of my favorite questions. Ask. Um, What's your recurring hockey nightmare? The, the the dream you have, you have it frequently, whether it's before a big game or a tournament or the season starts where you open your bag, you forgot your skates, you, your, your stick breaks in half, you don't know where the net is. What What's the recurring kind of hockey nightmare that you have? It's pretty weird, but um, the one that sticks out, it, it's completely impossible, but it, it'd be like, almost like I'm, I lose control of my body and I'm like, I try to turn once and I just end up doing 360s on my, <laughs> without being able to stop. <laughs> and like, almost like I'm possessed, kind of. I've had those dreams a lot when I was younger. I haven't had them in a while, but that one sticks out. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> That's what I was looking for. That, that exact answer was what I was looking for. Uh, number eight. Uh, we're going to get serious now. Uh, what teammate had the biggest impact on your career? Not necessarily Sea Dogs or anything, but uh, at any point in your playing career. Jeez. Mm, Can I think of that one and then come back at the end? Well, uh, no, I, I'll say no answer. because the next the next question is it relies on what your answer is. Okay. Um, I'll say. Oh, jeez. This is tough because there's a lot of guys who help me out. If I have to pick one, um, I'd, I'd say probably Matthew Joseph. All right. Yeah. And then number nine is the inverse of that. Uh, who do you feel you had the biggest impact on in your career to this point? Mm. You've always been a captain, a leader. Who do you feel you had the biggest impact on? Um, I'll say a guy from Ramuski plays on Gat. No, now, uh, Matthew Bizier. Yep. Um, after, after I was done, he said, he told me that, um, I was the person or teammate he'd learned the most from ever. So <laughs> I'm guessing it's probably, <laughs> <laughs> that's a high honor to hear that from anyone. Yeah. yeah. That was, uh, that was pretty special. Like, after we were all kind of crying in the room, like season was over and stuff, and he uh, came up to me, and you know, maybe it was under just because of the emotions, and he <laughs> he was getting really emotional, but still, it was pretty special that um, you know he was a first round pick to the queue, and he's a he's a good player now, so I'm glad I was able to help him out. That's awesome. And finally, number ten, uh, this is your uh, escape room dream team. So you're you're put into an escape room, maybe it's a hockey locker room. Maybe it's a, a, a bank, whatever it is, a prison. Um, there's a, it's a five guy squad. You're you're one of the guys. Who are the other four that you want in that escape room with you, and and why do you want them? And they have to be like teammates of yours at some point during your career, not necessarily Sea Dogs. Okay. You'll get well, bonus I'm points if they are Sea Dogs, but <laughs> I'm picking the smartest guys. <laughs> <laughs> you don't want like a no, strong no. guy who can just like break out of the. <laughs> In that case, I'd take Boko. No, I'm not taking Boko. Not taking Boko. Um, <laughs> I'm taking Callum Booth. Mm -hmm. uh, Matthew Joseph's pretty smart. Yeah. Um, who would experience with them? I'd say... Um, Spencer Smallman was pretty good. And... Um, Let's go with Jeez. Um You know what? Shabby. Shabby did a lot of them. Shabby did a lot of them. And I'm not I guess I guess I'm not taking all the smartest guys. I'm taking <laughs> the guys with more experience. Okay, okay. <laughs> now was that a shot at Shabby mentioning after you said his name saying, I guess I'm not taking the smartest guys. <laughs> Absolutely. 100%. <laughs> All right. Consider yourself tagged in this clip. 
Tomas Uh That's going to do it, Sam, for the lightning round. Fantastic. You lose a point on the hot wings. Um, other than that, you pretty much nailed it. I'd, I'd go 9 out of 10, so you easily qualify for the uh, Tournament of Champions we hold for the lightning round at the end of the year. So uh, congratulations. It's not a real thing. Don't get too excited, but um, a good performance, a good performance nonetheless. Uh, thank you so much for, for joining us. It's always a pleasure to, to catch up uh, with you, and uh, you actually filled in and... Uh, Helped out with our development camp we held virtually uh, last week and, and spoke with uh, a lot of our newer uh, drafted Sea Dogs. So uh, thank you for that. It's always good to see uh, guys giving back and, and teaching the youths of uh, tomorrow and the, and the future stars of the, the Sea Dogs and the Q. So uh, you're always so generous with your time and, and we really appreciate that. Uh, any last words before we sign off, Sam? Oh, thanks for having me. And um, yeah, just looking forward to. Uh... This year, I was having a big year this year. Hopefully, whenever it starts, the, looking forward to a deep playoff run. I'll be there in April and May um, if it happens. <laughs> <laughs> Fantastic. Well, good luck with your uh, upcoming uh, year as well in your schooling and uh, hockey career. Thanks for having me, John. No problem. That was Sam Dove McFalls, everyone. Thank you so much to Sam for joining us again. If you have someone, a favorite player, uh, past, present, or maybe even future that you'd like to see on the show, please do let us know. We want to have them on the show. Send in your questions as well. Tag us on social media. Uh, send us an email. Whatever it takes, we want to hear from you guys. Uh, next week, and I know we, I think we've previewed this the last two weeks, uh, that Nathan Bully was going to be here, uh, professional athletes. They do have uh, other commitments sometimes, and so uh, we were unable to get Nathan for tonight's show, but uh, I have confirmed and uh, that he is going to be here uh, next week. I think last week I said 99%, now it's 99.9%, .9%, so there's not too many uh, things in life more sure than that. So uh, get your questions in this week uh, that you have for Nathan, and we'll be joined as well by a current Sea Dog in the second half. Uh, of that show as well. Uh, speaking of current Sea Dogs, we do have an interview with Matt Gould coming up again. Thanks to Sam. Be sure to send your thanks to him as well on social media. You can find him on Twitter and Instagram. He's a good follow on Instagram. Tons of good content uh, coming from Sam. And as well, you can see uh, Sam play uh, next season as well with uh, UNB. I'm thinking their season starts in January, I believe, if all things go well. Uh, if not, you'll see him there in uh, future games for sure, and it's only a short drive away from St. John. But we will get to our uh, second and final interview of the day. It's going to be with Matt Gould, if he's ready. Fans, I'm joined now by number four of your St. John Sea Dogs, the Weymouth Wonder, Matt Gould. Matt, welcome to the show. How's it going? It's going pretty well. Um, just a quick catch up, uh, Matt, a little bit about last season and uh, kind of postseason and what you've been up to uh, since you left St. John. Obviously, you're a little more uh, unique scenario than uh, a lot of the other guys on our team because you've been living in the, the United States um, since you left. It's where you're from, where you were born. So uh, how's, how's quarantine been for you and uh, how have you been keeping busy? Yeah, quarantine's been uh, pretty interesting. Uh, haven't done this ever, but... The rinks just opened up three weeks ago, so getting back on the ice, uh, working out best I can. Gyms opened up today, actually. and um, But, yeah, I've been playing street hockey, had a game before this, and, uh, yeah, pretty much that's it. And all it takes is you to be playing hockey again, and then everything feels normal, yeah. right? That's <laughs> exactly. <laughs> now, for – and I'm not – I'm familiar with kind of the Boston area, but um, where, where would Weymouth be in, in comparison to, like – to Boston, is it a is it a populous population? You know, density is it a, a, yeah. a busy kind of metropolis? What what's Weymouth like? Uh, Weymouth's just a a town like twenty miles south of Boston. Um, Charlie Coyle played there. Well, is from Weymouth. Played in St. John, um, but it's like a I'd say it has the same population as St. John the city, but it's more uh, suburban like. Okay. Sure. Cool. 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 Uh, so I want to talk a little bit about, um, your kind of career in the queue so far. It's only one season, but, uh, you made a pretty good impact uh, since arriving in St. John just prior to the start of last year. What kind of changed your mind about, uh, coming to, to Canada and coming to St. John specifically? Um, at that point in my, in my career, I played two years in the USHL. Um, I was drafted by the Sea Dogs back in 2016 and I thought it was just the best move. Um, Coming to St. John, it, 
good young team, and um, I'm looking to make a run for it next year. Excited to get back out there. Yeah, so your plan is to be a 20-year-old next season, and you seem to kind of fit in uh, on the on the PK. Really, speed was a, was a huge um, asset of yours. How do, how do you feel about your first season in the queue? What do you feel like you, you brought to the team? I think I brought I think I brought energy. Um, the Q is a great league. Um, it was it was definitely a it gave me like the first month it was it was uh, it was hard I'd say, but after the first month it was got got in the groove and you know I think I just brought energy, a little bit of grit and a little bit of leadership too for sure like to hear that now heading into this next season you, you talked about uh, hopefully making a run for it and it's a, a big season and we've added some pretty big pieces here in the off season through the draft and and trades and things uh what, what are your thoughts on next season goals for the team and kind of how do, how do you expect to perform uh, as an individual um well i i like i said we're looking to make a run for it bring a memorial cup back to st john um we've made a, a lot of great additions a uh, bunch of bunch of good young guys, but you know our team's got older too. So I think we're we're in a really good spot, and yeah, fantastic. Uh, so I did prepare a, a small game for us here, Matt. Um, I'm hoping it's it's up your alley and, and part of your specialties. But as we know, uh, the NHL uh, playoffs are hopefully going to start here in the next um, few weeks. Training camp opens training camp opens a, a week from today, I believe, and then three weeks from then they're, they're supposed to start the play in. So I had a little uh, playoff pick 'em here. I got all the matchups for the, uh, the the first part of the the, the play in and. Uh, you, you you feel comfortable with this? You, you're skilled in the, the NHL. You, you know what you're talking yeah. about. Perfect. I think I got it. <laughs> Perfect. Love the confidence. So we'll go with the the first matchup here. Uh, it's going to be uh, Connor McDavid's Oilers against uh, Matthew Highmore and the Blackhawks. Who do you got? Best of five series. I'm going Edmonton. Good young team. They're coming off hot. Coming up, okay, perfect. And it's five, five versus twelve seed too. So I mean, it's a little, little one sided. You gotta think. Yeah. Uh, three zero sweep. What are you feeling there? Um, I'll go. Is it still? What's the? I, I believe it's best of five. Best of five. Yeah, three zero sweep. Three zero sweep. Okay, perfect. Clean. <laughs> uh, second one here. We got the Nashville Predators and the uh, Arizona Coyotes. That's a tough one. Six versus eleven. Six versus eleven. I'm gonna go with I'm gonna go with the Coyotes. Coyotes a little bit of an upset. Okay, yeah. I like that. I feel like yeah, they're they're on the rise. I feel like they're uh, yeah. they're they're due. They're due. Uh, moving back to the uh, Eastern Conference, we got the Hurricanes as a six seed taking on the Rangers with the eleven seed. We got uh, we got Sea Dogs in both organizations. So this one's you know you're good with yeah. uh, whichever side you pick. I'm gonna go with Carolina. Carolina, okay, perfect. Who do you who do you like in Carolina that sways your decision? Sebastian Aho. It's too uh -huh. good. It's too good. Too good. Okay, some Canadian content here again. Uh, we got the Canucks as a seven seed taking on the Wild, ten seed. Uh, I'm gonna go with Canucks. Canucks, yeah, you like the the young the young power. The young, there? yeah. I think all these young teams are gonna come back flying. Yeah, I mean they're they're the guys that are going to be ready. And Quinn is oh, yeah. too strong of a name for the Canucks to to not make some noise, right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Staying in uh, Canada here with the next one, we have the Calgary Flames as the eight seed taking on the Winnipeg Jets as the nine seed. They're pretty much identical records. Uh, Nathan Beaulieu is a part of the uh, the Jets, but who do you who do you got in this Canadian matchup? Um, I'm gonna go with Winnipeg. Winnipeg, even though like yeah. Johnny Hockey, I feel like you would be all over that as an American guy. Yeah, I just feel like I don't know. I need I need an underdog here. Need an underdog. Okay, okay. Jets, you heard it here first. Uh, <laughs> now this one, this is a loaded one because this is gonna upset a lot of people depending on your pick. We get the Leafs as an eight seed taking on the Blue Jackets as a nine seed. Who you got? Leafs. Leafs. What what's the series? Three two, three one, three zero. I'll give it. I'll go three two. Three two, tight one. They don't really yeah. do well in elimination games. I'm not sure if you're aware. Of that. I know. I know. <laughs> Sticking with the young trend. Though. The young, the young, the young kids. Okay, I like that. Uh, now this one, this is a personal personal battle for me. We got oh. the five the five seed Penguins taking on the twelve seed Habs. Who do you got? I'm a Habs fan, but I got a soft spot for the Penguins too. Who, who do you have? 
I don't know. Boston might hate me. I'm going with the Habs. Oh, I like that. I like that. Now, were you were you brought up just like you wouldn't even look at the word Montreal yeah. like it was a no. It was Can't. a dirty word in your house. Okay, that makes sense. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. Montreal. What do you got? Three two, three zero. What are we looking at? Three one. Three one. I hope someone's, yeah. uh, I mean, I'm recording this, but I hope someone's recording this and uh, we can go back and look <laughs> at it and see if you're some savant when it comes to, uh, to pick them. Okay, this is the, the final one. I, I've liked your picks so far, nothing wildly out of left field. Uh, but this one, though, it's got a lot of Sea Dogs um, content in it. We got the seven seed Islanders taking on the 10 seed Panthers. We got Huberto, we got Hoffman. Where, how how yeah. do you feel here? I'm going Sea Dogs, Panthers. <laughs> Panthers. What do we got? 3 0, just clean sweep. Clean sweep, Huberto, <laughs> hat trick. Every, every game. You're calling hat trick every <laughs> He's coming out of it with nine goals. You heard it here first from that goal. All right, we'll, we'll timestamp this and we'll come back to it in, oh, geez, two months' time once all these games have wrapped up <laughs> and we'll see. Uh, just how much of a, a genius you are when it comes to pick and maybe I'll, I'll come over with my bookie sometime down the way. <laughs> well, Matt, uh, that, that was a blast. Uh, thanks so much yeah. for joining us, and I uh, can't wait to see you uh, back in St. John. We hope you had a, a safe and happy uh, July 4th there as well. Thank you, Quinny. You too. No problem, bud. Take care. That was Matt Gould, number four for your St. John Sea Dogs, guys. That's going to do it for tonight's show. We hope you enjoyed our interviews with Sam Dub McFalls and Matt. Uh, do record down those pickums. I want to see uh, if if he's a, a fortune teller. If you can see the future uh, once those games are complete, I'm interested to see. Uh, we'll have to write those down after the fact. Uh, Guys, let us know who you want to see on upcoming shows next week. Again, promise this is becoming Matt Damon on Jimmy Kimmel, where every week he says, we didn't have enough time for uh, Matt Damon tonight. But uh, I promise Nathan Mullio will be here next week. We've scheduled it. It's all good. He will be here. I promise 99.99%. It's as a, a sure thing as Lysol at this point. Uh, send in your feedback as well, and uh, let us know what clips uh, you want to see on upcoming shows. And uh, we'll have this up on YouTube uh, later tonight, if not tomorrow morning. And uh, we'll be back uh, next week, same time, 7.30, Atlanta, here on Facebook Live. Thank you.